Hi, this is Keith. I'm exploring the Miami Erie Canal today. After becoming a state in 1803 and driving out the native people in the War of 1812, the population of Ohio swelled to over half a million by 1820. Roads were muddy as large part of the state was a swamp. Ohio decided that water was the way to move merchandise. These canal boats can carry more weight than a modern semi-truck. So they decided to dig a canal system across Ohio. They soon found that they could not link the entire state with one canal, so they dug two. The Miami Erie stretched 256 miles across the western part of the state and connected the Ohio River and Lake Erie. Ohio is not flat. It is four to five hundred feet higher in the middle along the Laramie Ridge. So they had to raise the boats up one side and down the other. To do this, they built a system of locks. Lock one, south. Lock two, south. That must be lock three, four, and five. A lock is a chamber just big enough for a boat. This this place there's a lot going on here. You open one gate, pull the boat in. Close the gate. Raise or lower the water level. Open the other gate and let the boat out. Building the lock took a lot of material. Metal hardware, stone and wood. The locks built far away from the stone quarry were made from wood because it was too hard to move the stone over long distances. They also needed to build houses for the lock tenders to maintain the system. So they had dug a canal and now they needed to fill it with water. There was not enough water in the highest part of the state to fill the canal, so they made three reservoirs to supply the water. They could make the boats go up and down the ridge, but the water only goes downhill. They had to plan and regulate water usage through the canal, because if they ran out of water at the high spot, most of the canal would shut down. None of the canal lakes in Ohio are very uh, deep. These okay. are six, eight, ten feet. They're not very deep. One of the, now, this was the cheapest of the, of the reservoirs to build, because all they had to do was build a dam. You may think that all canals were ditches, but many were just berms to hold in the water. Powered by mules or, pony or poles, the speed limit was four miles an hour because if your wake eroded the berm, a breach could empty the canal, stop traffic, and flood local farms. The practice of engineering was being developed as they built the canals. Some of the more impressive feats were the deep cut, where they cut through over 6,000 feet of a glacial deposit. There was no good way around it and no water to lock up and over. They also built aqueducts so the canal boats 
could cross over streams. Towns grew up along the canal. Buildings open to the canal were as important as buildings that opened to the street. They needed bridges when the canal crossed roads. Bump bridges pivoted when the canal boats bumped them out of the way. The canal made opportunities for water power and mills sprung up. This they call the tumbles. It used to power a mill. Here's the grain mill that it powered. The canal took a lot of maintenance to keep in operation. Its heyday was 1851, but soon declined as railroads became a more efficient method of transporting goods. But the canal is just on the other side of the railroad. And a lot of times when the canal went out of business, the railroads took over either the canal bed or the, uh, or the towpath because work was already done for them. The canal is still a big part of Ohio. It's celebrated with artwork, historic sites, and it's used for recreation. The towpath has become walking and biking trails.